He got out of one gang to go into another. He worked for the cartel. He was a rough rider. What hasn't my husband done? Started being around gangbangers around nine, and I got into a gang at 11. He was in state prison, federal prison, Mexican prison. Where hasn't my husband been in prison? My name is Bethany Savage and I'm married to an ex-cartel gang member. A lot of people have asked me questions about being married to GC, what it's like being married to him. So I'm gonna take you step by step and answer them to the best that I can. At age of 17, I actually started working with uh, the cartel in Mexico. Uh, I was pretty much like a manager. Um, I would make sure that the cars would get to Mexico, the cars would get back and uh, they're paying me very well. Do I fear for my life? When I first met JC and I found out about his background, the things that he's been through, what he's done, his past life, and I started dating him, yes, I think anybody going into a relationship knowing the things that I knew would fear have some type of fear, you know, for their life simply because of his past. As I got to know him and I started to see how genuine he was, how nice, how, how much I could trust him, and I knew that he was no longer in that life, that fear slowly went away. I feel very safe being with him, more safe than I've ever felt. Do I ever think he'll go back to that life or prison. In the beginning, yes, there were times I felt he might because of the trauma he had. He would speak about going back and how he felt like prison was his home. I en enjoyed being in there, as, as weird as that sounds. Um, I actually liked the structure. So it, it almost like grew on me. I, I felt comfortable there. Um, I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of issues with myself that uh, I still hadn't addressed. So uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was home for me pretty much in there. When you're in prison, they, they, they say that they, they get you ready to come home, but it, it, they don't get you ready. They just teach you a, a job, a trade, and then they throw you out. I mean, you see so much violence in there that you come home and you think that it's natural, and then what ends up happening is that you commit a crime because you, you spent your whole time in there being a criminal. You don't know how to function in society. You come home and you think that everything is solved with violence. You think that everything is solved with sneaking around. And it's just a very different lifestyle. And he no longer feels that way now. He talks about how he never wants to go back and how happy he is now. But that's because he never felt like he had a home. The biggest hurdle in our relationship was his PTSD to the point where I almost left. I used to think that I was broken. And then he taught me that. He like, he cared about us. He wanted to see us do better. And um, in my world, there's not too many people that care about us. Numerous times because of just the anger that he had and the certain triggers that I didn't know that he had. So when I would say something or do something, it would trigger something and it would cause him, you know, to lash out. And he didn't even understand why he would get that way, neither did I. And I had to learn how to deal with his PTSD, learn his triggers to prevent that from happening. 
As a kid, a uh, very dysfunctional family. My, my parents got married at 14, and um, they were kids, you know, having kids, and they, they, didn't, they didn't know better. My dad was an alcoholic, drug addict, and I guess was very abusive with my mom, and my mom wasn't well either, you know, mentally. And her brother and uncle of, of ours that uh, ended up molesting me and my sisters, and, you know, um, not only was it being molested, but, you know, almost tortured at the same time, you know, cold baths, uh, beatings. Does he still affiliate with his past life? Yes, he does, but he keeps them at a distance due to never wanting to fall back into that life. The power, the money, it's very easy to go back, but is it worth it? And I think that's the biggest thing that he's realized is it's not worth it. He spent 17 years of his life in prison and alone. And now he has a family, he's not alone anymore, and he doesn't have to look over his shoulder. So to me, that's a big change, you know, for someone to finally realize after 17 years that it's just not worth it. As time went on, I noticed a tremendous change in him. The change I saw in him was so quick. He had to learn how to forgive himself and know he's not who he was and to be able to finally trust someone, not feel judged, and be accepted for who he was and who he is now. That was the biggest thing that he needed to learn in order for his PTSD and for our relationship to work, was to know that he no longer was that person and to not feel like I was judging him in any way, which I never did. I knew the things that he had, you know, that he had done in his life and I accepted him for who he was and I told him all the time that just because of what you've done does not make you who you are today. You learn from that and you move on. The biggest change I've seen in my husband is his trust and loyalty towards me. He puts his family first in everything he does. You know, uh, it's never too late to change. It's never too late to make a, a better decision. And it, it's never too late to ask for help. And that's the biggest thing is that it's so easy to do what's wrong, but it's, it's, it's very, very hard to be strong sometimes. And the biggest message I can give for anyone out there living a similar life to ours is to never give up on that person because change is possible and GC is living proof.